Hey guys, we are super, super excited to be announcing that we are part of the second annual Black Effect Festival in Atlanta, Georgia. So if you're bringing your kids this year, just do this. Just do this the whole time. Because it's going to be a wild and brand new show that you didn't see last year. The date is Saturday, April the 27th. Make sure you head on over to blackeffect.com and get your tickets now. See you there. Hey guys, hey guys, hey guys. No, you got to say howdy. Oh, howdy, y'all. We will be in Dallas, Texas Memorial Day weekend for the Together Land Festival headlining May 26th. Make sure you get your tickets now at togetherland.com. Let me let y'all know what this lineup looks like. Wayne, Jeezy's on there, Summer Walker, Drew Hill, bitch. Come out and also see us. We are headlining the podcast stage. Say it again. Headlining. headlining. Head. Headlining. And if you're good at giving that, jump on stage with us. See you soon. Hey guys, uh, welcome to another episode of Horrible. Blade. This is Yones. I'm your girl Mandy B, aka that bitch. Hi everybody, welcome back for another episode. I'm Wheezy. We are in the studio today with no guest. Oh, I know y'all happy. Go ahead and play with your pussy now, bitch. Uh, wait, why are you looking at me like that? Okay, okay. Well, if you at work, don't play with your pussy. Wait till you get. By the way, speaking of work, I have had people like on set be like, oh, you're a podcaster? What's your podcast called? And the second they click on something, like, we curse so much in the 45, first 45 seconds. I'm like, in, I I can't imagine how y'all feel when your headphones die. I mean, do we just curse right now? Go ahead and play with your pussy, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> first off, yeah, pussy but, is anatomy. Pretty science, quickly. And bitch is a female name for a dog. Mm-hmm. So both of those are technically, yeah, it's giving science. Okay, <laughs> uh, okay, you're right. I think that we should. We both recorded a lot. The next time we in the studio, you're worse than me. I'm right? gonna work on it. Is Mandy worse than me? Who curses more? Thank you, thank you. I like. Well, who, who would you say Who's is bigger or more? <laughs> wow, whoa! I feel like it's you're the whoa there. I really don't think that you say like, nigga a lot when we have a white guest, and it's and, and mind you, I don't think there should be a nigger. Uh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say nigga counter, not the not the not the ER. <laughs> no, I was gonna say a nigga counter. Uh-huh. Do you know what? Uh-huh. A nigga counter. I don't think we need a nigga a nigga clock on how many nigga times you got. But I'm just saying, we have white guests, and you say nigga, I'll be sitting there like, okay, oh. I'm not gonna lie. I only catch myself as it's coming out. Then I'm be like, fuck, I already said it. So I'll be thinking of not to say it the next. When time. we was with Julie then, Ginger, and you was like, "Cause these niggas," I was like, "Now nah, I hope okay. she'll say it back." So here's the thing: I do, I do do it as a little test, cause th- then they might <laughs> feel a little bit too comfortable. And if they say the shit next to us, we gonna have to clock their ass. Um, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, clock their butts. I'm gonna try not to curse. And I say it, okay, so like the the volume in which I say nigga in front of white people is really up to their proximity to other niggas. For example, with Rory, I don't really get scared about saying nigga. With Liz Goldwyn, I give her one or two. Okay. Because I'm just like, I know your other friends, they're like, these niggas. And I'll be like, I'm letting you chill. But when I'm real passionate about stuff and I'm like about to cry and we talk about men or something, I'll be like, because you know niggas just, and she don't care, obviously, because she chill. But with Rory, I feel like you listen to like music every day. Ma be like, nah, 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 nah. so it's okay. I mean, like, Julian definitely well, well, can't say niggas. For me, it's really hard because not with all them white people. I only fuck with niggas. Like, if I'm talking about men, there ain't no crackers. So there ain't no, I'm not going to start naming all the words that we call people of other ethnicities. However, I only deal with one. And these niggas be pissing me off. They be motherfuckers. So I know I'm we just gonna... said we shouldn't be cursing too much. <laughs> okay, I'm not cursing for the rest of the If episode. you've never heard of our show, it's actually about, to be fair, it's about decolonizing kink for niggas. <laughs> but you're allowed in here to listen. And we appreciate your... Dollars and subscriptions, because you know what? It pays our nigga bills. And so anyway. hopefully uh, you support us with our book coming out. I kind of wanted that to be our catch up. Oh, I put nigga in one chapter. That's the... Wait, really? You're limiting the use of nigga in our book? No, no, no. <laughs> I literally... I thought that's you wanna, why we, let me read. I thought that's why we really wanted a black author so she could comfortably get our voices across the paper. Well, I'm, I'm writing mine out where, like, she's just editing. But, like... Uh, I will read you a little part of mine. So I literally put beard bait and scissors, scissors, <laughs> scissors in a group chat. I'm actually going to read you guys a text. So 
I forget a lot of shit. And I was like, damn, I don't want to lie because it's not like I'm lying. It's just how I remember something. So this is how I started a text to them. Hey, I know this sounds kind of crazy, but I'm working on writing this book with Mandy and I wanted to fact check with y'all because one of the chapters is all about my throuple. They wrote, LOL, okay. I said, all right, here we go. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Did I eat the cum out of scissors or did you pull it out and I licked it off of her pussy? Sorry, can't remember. Oh my God. He said, definitely I pulled out out of her pussy and put it in your mouth. Out of body experience, I could have passed out from that. My body was nutting. And also, add this in your book. You turn into a senior citizen after you come. <laughs> Tell the people that. <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, you should also add in that time that when you did, you started petting her. And then she said, bitch, are you petting me? You ain't in this no more. Because see, when I come, it's like I pass you, out. And you're like, so I was trying to do this to let them niggas know I'm still, I rubbed the titty like in a circular motion. Like, I'm still in it. We still, ah, ah, ah. Um, but here is one of the things that I wrote. And this is when I was like, oh, this is so like black. <laughs> Literally, there's a chapter where I wrote, now, mind you, and in parentheses, I put nigga shit. <laughs> like, that's some black shit to say. Oh, that's the only time you're going to put it in the book? No, that no, no. Time in, the, in the parentheses? Um, I'll read you something I wrote. Finally, we get to bed. Beard Bay immediately kisses her. I can't remember if it's their first kiss or not, but I could remember I was not needing to be involved. I felt everything that her body could be feeling. Excitement, pleasure, nerves, this strange way of feeling connected to her and making me feel very healthy and safe. I even remember her peeking her eye open as a way of making sure I was looking and feeling comfortable. But this nigga, on the other hand, that's was actually, just... That's a, that's a second count? Yep. Already. Was just happy to be in that motherfucker. I will say, he's consistently one of the most sexy guys in the room, but it was still his first threesome, and I love watching a nigga on his knees serving a bitch. Oh, sorry. Two niggas. Three. That's three. In... It, within 10 seconds. All right, so maybe I should break it up. It's giving Mandy's chapter. Uh, oh. <laughs> well, so, actually, no. Um, my my work on this book has been um, hard. Um, you started with the pain chapters? No, bitch. Put those as last. Mandy, are, Mandy and I, by the way, are just calling, like, some of them are hard. To, so we say, oh, these are painful. These so, are nice. So when I say... Um, there's there's certain chapters that I literally went through and I put last, 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 have to work through my therapist with this. Um, one of the ones that I actually felt comfortable working through brought a lot of anxiety to me. So uh, I am doing a chapter on my abortion, um, which is why I hit you up. And me with my friends, we've been talking about uh, just all of our experiences with abortions lately. But basically for this chapter specifically, um, not only is my experience included, but I did an interview with my mom. Um, and maybe a day and a half after my abortion, it never happened. Me and my mom never revisited it. We never talked about it. Um, Damn, I didn't it, either. It was never a conversation. And so for this book specifically, I interviewed her to see how she felt about me coming to her and how I said, how she remembers the day that I told her walking with me into the clinic and I had to relive kind of my abortion all over again that I haven't spoke on. Um, so I interviewed my mom. Um, we ended up speaking a lot about not only that experience with me, but her abortions, one being with my dad. So there was a lot about Did that you know? relationship. Um, I didn't know one was with my dad and it was, at the end, it was literally the abortion that she had knowing that... Um, I almost don't want you to tell. I mean, I, well, I don't know if this is going to make the book. And I, I mean, I'll share a little bit of it now. But basically, she, her that abortion with my dad um, was because she knew she could no longer stand the abuse with him. Mm. And so she had the abortion right before we ended up in a shelter because she had to get away. And I don't want to cry. It's been a lot. And then this was the first time I asked my friend who gave me the money for my abortion. I interviewed her. And it's just like, there's so much about my past that I just put behind me. And shout out to Kita. Love you. Um, we're still friends to this day. I called her and I remember we we literally relived our friendship. We weren't that close because I felt like she stole my best friend from me in high school because we went to different high schools after middle school. Shout out to Allie. And um, us having the conversation 
I had never asked her what that money meant to her. She was my only friend at the time that had a job. And she literally sent me the money that she made at Coldstone. And so this was my first time. My, my abortion was right before me going into junior year. So Did you ever pay her back? Did you guys talk oh, about it? I paid it? her back immediately, which is, which is what uh, I found out. She was like, we never talked about it again. All you kept saying was you'll pay me back and you paid me back. But we never discussed it. And mind you, she, and this is how, listening back to it, my abortion was only $500. She said I called and was like, I got a hundred. My mom didn't have nothing. I, she maybe gave me like $300. And she was like, at the time, this, that was like $50,000. Yeah. So like the, the conversations I'm having around what's going in this book um, are hard because I realize having an abortion that young, all of my friends having an abortion that young, we all know we had abortions and we don't really talk about it. Um, and to know that I literally have not had the conversation with my mom or one of my friends who even helped me pay for it was brought a lot of anxiety to me to even hear it because it was what I feel like to this day, my mistake. It's also funny because I had to relive that day. I was with you. Is with that motherfucking gangbanger nigga that got locked up. And so I'm... Listen, I'm, I had a plan B abortion I, with that gangbanger nigga. Let's like, not forget. So I'm just like, um, this this book, therapeutically, if that's even a word, uh, has been a lot on me. Um, I'm recording my therapy sessions with my with with my therapist for this uh book, but over that the doesn't last, feel invasive. I mean, I ask everyone. So because you're giving the. By the way, we should explain why you're recording them. I mean, I'm recording them for a multitude of reasons. We have a book editor. Well, we have a book editor, yes, but for me, I've been in therapy for three years. I am very much in the present and plan to be a better person in the future. I cut off from everything that doesn't fit well. My trauma response and defense mechanism is removing myself. I recently had a conversation with my therapist that was so uncomfortable because in writing about this book, I keep referring to my past self as she. She did, like, it's not even me. And so I'm having this outer body experience trying to realize that she is me. That's actually my experience. And I keep referring to myself in past tense like it's a whole nother person because either my decisions, I don't like them. And that's why I told you with writing this book, it was going to be really important for me to not fully um, be prideful of all the things I've done because I'm not happy of the decisions and such that I've made all the time with every man. Um, every time I laid down the things, you know, within my family dynamic. And so it's like really been interesting getting through this. So um, I love that we've gotten to a place where we both like can agree to kind of what we want to share in this book. But this process heavily weighing on me from the divorce of my last podcast to dealing with this, to dealing with the Internet, to dealing with the comments like it has been just heavy because it's been a lot. It's been a lot like literally from possibly trying to reach out to my cousin about like his sexuality, because that's a part of my anal sex story. Like I'm getting into I'm Jamaican anal sex me you gay. And now I'm in a place where bitch, I love a Buddha. Like literally being able to see my transgression of just who I've become and having to really sit with things that make me uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. It's It's been, it's been a really good experience, a really heavy experience, but I'm like hoping that y'all like this book and y'all buy it and y'all come see us on tour next year. I mean, I'm only in the erotica stages of the book, which is kind of scary. Like you just kind of even scared me talking just now. I was like, Girl! one of my chapters is about an R word story mm. and mine was very violent and he's a popular person in the industry and not anymore i'm sure i'm making more money than him but he was once upon a time and uh it's crazy because like i remember hitting up charlemagne and i told him who it was and i was like should i not include that this person was famous that did this to me no you gotta include that and he was like well a lot of you at that age because i was telling him about it a little bit 
And really, I think the reason I went back to that hotel room and that experience happened to me was probably because he was famous, right? I'm 19, 20. I think I was 19. But um, yeah, like that young, dumb girl shit. Like, I don't know. The power in saying no now is so easy to me. And you don't understand, though, the power dynamics either of celebrity. Like, because remember, I asked for help. Right. But we when, and they didn't help me because we, of who he was. We've talked about. I, I shared both of my stealthing experiences on this pod. You know who one of them was. One of them was. The other one I'll tell you when, we, when we're done. Both of them. Were rich, famous celebrities. And. I even recall not feeling violated because, OK, they got the money. I'll get the plan B. And also, I didn't know stealthing was a violation. Or an assault or some because I, I consented to have sex with you with protection, you pulling it off later. Of course, I didn't consent to that. But also in my mind, though, it was violating to not feel violated in the moment because of who it was. Have you ever confronted them? About no, it? I did. Did you? Yep. Uh, wanted to talk to him about it. Got influenced by another one of his rap mates. And he acted like I was tripping. I think he said I was tripping. That he was like, yeah. I feel like if I saw him now, I might spit on him. But I really just kind of pity him, I guess. Because, like, I know I'm not the only person. Because one of his bandmates told me that he'd heard it before. And he told me that in confidence. Oh, wow. Not confidence in me. Bitch, he fucked me up. But, nah. I think um, the craziest part about my story, and y'all read it in the book, is that I literally ran out of the room, asked for help. And when he came behind me, he was like, yo, she's drunk. Da, da, da. And I asked a woman for help. That's the crazy thing about some of these. And, I, and I'm like, damn, I do have to include that he's a famous person. No, you do. But the thing that's difficult about it is people will tell you or act as though you're, you know, searching for this clout within this thing. Bro, a famous nigga doing that to me is not going to make or break my career or or this this story or this book. But I do think, and I kind of empathize now with some women that choose to come out I guess I always have, but like, I realized like, damn, you kind of want to release it. Mm -hmm. And it is a release, but I haven't got to that part of the book. I mean, I'm at this super juicy, nasty part of the book, right? Like I'm talking about how I was sucking cum off my fingers from scissors, oh how goodness. wet she was, how we would go in the bathroom when Beard Bay was asleep and we would dish about the threesome, like just fun shit I've never talked about. And also what makes this book even crazier is like, I'm falling in love with someone while writing this book and experiencing new things. And like, I don't know. I just, it's weird because I just, I thought it would be more about like my release from like old day and, and realizing I'm in this empowering moment. And now I'm just like, oh, bitch. girl, we wrote this proposal when I was still with this nigga. I, the, the chapters that are last, last are with him. I hate that I have to talk about a fun time with someone that I hate right now. Like I've been able to, you've been learn. able to do that? Yes. I've released oh, wait, in, in, two in, years. In, well, in, in I guess, before we get into our vanilla shit, because, bitch, I got an outline and we're going to stick to it. Um, this was in your outline. It was. It was. I, I want to ask you, how do you remember and enjoy or relive or try to think back to good moments with people that ended up hurting you so badly? I forgave you, myself. Listen, Old Bay is a dope person. He's fun. I have fun memories with him. He definitely violated my trust and my loyalty, but I forgave myself because I just was like, there were so many good memories. He'll change. He's great. We're such a fit. Who am I going to meet that also has money too and can travel the world with me? Boom. Next week, bitch. Anyway, just saying like these niggas and, and my new niggas finer and more connected to me and my body and spiritually able to like understand that he needs to fill me up. I was so surface level with Old Bay. I was having so much fun with this person that like, I just kind of thought it'll work itself out. Um, but I forgave myself. That was the thing. I spent so much time in therapy. This is not a projection. Yelling about this nigga, being mad and feeling not jealous, but just, well, yes, jealous that he could move on. Mm. he moved on with someone else and she's beautiful and like I'm sure she's great and I was jealous that 
she could possibly be getting a version of him that I didn't see. Mm. But I forgave myself because I should have left that nigga a while ago. I think that's my problem. I'm so upset with him. But now I'm like upset that he's not here. That's my problem. I think that that's why. I've, you should be happy. He's I know, but that that's where I'm having the difficulty. I'm not interested. Like, I'm still. What, where are we? I'm literally almost a full year out of this fucking relationship. And I'm not. I don't feel at all any further in feeling empty without him. Like, I, I still, as much as he hurt me, there's so much that I miss about how he made me feel mm-hmm. or the, the the feelings of those things. And we'll get into that for the horrible decision uh, because it's kind of where I've been, but we'll get to it. Uh, vanilla shit for this week. I wanted to have fun with this just a little bit. Oh, because we argued about Dre a few weeks ago? Yeah, and this is some, well, this one isn't, this one isn't current events because bitch, fuck that shit. Y'all ain't getting current events out of me. Um, <laughs> but this one comes from Spiritual Word. Uh, and this is actually funny because I wanted the room, if anything, we could talk and open up the floor to y'all um, with how y'all are using your dick outside in these streets. Bless you. Bless you. I, I, I felt another one coming. A new study says that 5% of Americans are now having sex to save on heating bills. 5%? <laughs> Amid surging utility costs. Let me let me get let me get the the, the thing. As per a recent report by New Homes Mate, forty six percent of the thousand Americans surveyed are finding it challenging to cover their bills, and approximately a quarter opt to wear additional clothing, while over a third have decided between heating and buying groceries to stay warm. Five percent are engaging in intimate activities, huh? While two percent we're actually just choosing to drink liquor because y'all know that shit make you hot. For a more lasting solution, the report found that 60% of homeowners made energy-saving upgrades to their homes. This included 16% who upgraded their windows, 22% who adopted their thermostats, which is great because clearly they have money. Um, but basically, women, uh, couples or singles are choosing, instead of putting on the heat and raising their utility bills, to just invite a motherfucker over and have some sex. I've done some dumb shit to cook. Like, <laughs> I'll tell you the dumbest thing that I've done. Please share with the audience to I'd save to, to save money. <laughs> so you probably heard me mention my nigga drives. My street has cleaning on like I think it was Bullshit. Wednesday from midnight midnight to three a.m. He was like, "Damn, bro, I should just park and get the ticket. The ticket's gonna be a hundred dollars, whatever." I was like, "Or we could go out for three hours and save the money." that you would have got on the ticket because we're already drunk. So we're only going to get two drinks when we go to Buttons or whatever spot. We're going to be straight. Wow. I actually thought you were going to say, dumb. let's just fuck in the car and then you can move it. I literally thought, oh, of, I'm going to tell you what we wait, do do. He still spent money. Not a not hundred for the ticket. <laughs> so this is what we, I've been doing lately. So couldn't find a spot the other night. We went to this party and he was like, damn, babe, I, I was cold. It was raining. He was like, let me double park, kiss you goodnight. Like, really, the Lower East Side's a wild place. So then, you know, pussy was out, looking juicy. And you could see his car from the window. Bitch, we was fucking just like this, waiting for the cop to come, just waiting for that motherfucker. I was like, oh, did the police got, no, no, you're not getting your ticket. Oh, oh. And yeah. You he was looking like, out the window for a parking police officer. He watched that pussy and I watched for the police. I'm not playing with you. Speaking of the police, I just want to say, a lot of cops know who we are, and it's a very uncomfortable situation. Has this come, happened to you when, oh, they, girl, when you were in yes. jail? Wait, calm down. Oh, calm sorry. Down. Was that me? When Whoa, you... bitch. Whoa, it was what you just said. I'd like to share my personal story here. Now, like, have you shared my personal story? That was like story? me a few weeks ago, and I was like, let me tell about my abortion. <laughs> oh, that's how you went to jail. <laughs> no, bitch. I actually uh, have met quite a few cops, and it's crazy because I like a man in uniform. So, baby. Oh, Lord. Blue lives matter just as much as blue balls. Oh, man. Wait, wait, is that ba- wait, okay, sorry. That was a bad joke. Y'all, we're, we're comedians here. There's a comedian in my slash. So In my I'm, slash? In my slash. I'm a media host, personality, producer, comedian. Comedian allows me to offend everybody. I had to add it. Yep. <laughs> okay, babe. It was a bad joke. Sorry. So I, tell us about this motherfucking cop. So no, no, no. I'm just saying that, and I think I mentioned it to you, during my December stint on the dating app that should go unannounced, I matched with 
a nigga who was in the academy. And I was so ready because, you know, I already had a firefighter. I said, ooh, the next one's going to be a cop. Different uniform. I'm hyped. I actually love a man in uniform. Uh -huh. But it just wasn't working. Uh, it, it just wasn't. It just wasn't working. But the cops that I've met on the out, y'all listen to the pod, by the way, because y'all don't stop me on the train. Y'all don't stop me on the corner. I didn't cross the street. I didn't had at least three, four cops be like, like your show, me like too. what you're doing. I have a lot of women um, come up to me, women cops. Do you think it's weird that cops listen to us? No. I, I, I mean, no one's ever come up to me that's not black. I ain't gonna hold you. <laughs> any any um, career that has an extensive overtime pay, full of whores. Because you could always just say, babe, I'm working late. Lawyers, cops, How did nurses, get here? doctors. Like, I don't why do you know. have to be a whore to listen to this show? No, no, you don't. Have to, you, I'm not even a whore and I do this show. So. So in your slash liar is there. Okay, got you. <laughs> Actually, you want to know how much of a hoe I am? So for this Hawaii trip, we're like looking up shit, trying to figure out where we're going to go, right? And I was like, yo, I just want us to have a really relaxing time. Like, I don't want to party. Maybe we'll look for like a little black in Oahu group and we'll do one little Afrobeast thing. And we go to bed. He was like, yeah, I want to wake up early. Plus, we're going to be six hours. Back. Like, let's relax. Girl, somehow I stumbled upon a sex party on a yacht in Hawaii the day we leave. And I was like, oh, no, y'all got to stay an extra night. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, you just have to. I was like, hey, I know that we were talking about relaxing. However, I'm not going to lie. And this is now you just have to let them know for research purposes. y'all. I literally said, I think I should charge this to the car. <laughs> I was like, oh, bitch. No, 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 no. Now, if you want to fly me to Hawaii <laughs> on the business so that I, too, can experience this for research purposes. No, like, I just feel I like mean, I'm down I to take a trip to Hawaii. It. They don't need to be charging me, bitch, because I'm going to plug them. But no, we literally had to extend the fucking little car, extend the state. Oh and I was like, goodness. yeah, I really feel like I should be doing this. It's very difficult when you're like trying to be good. Not trying because to be good. Because the horror comes out of you. You know, like the there's horror. The horror, horror, horror. It's really bad. Like, I literally can't look at women in Pilates or yoga. Like, it's like... So you sexualize women? I'm horny. Because <laughs> there's a horror deep inside of me. Bro, have you, has anyone ever done happy baby position? You know what this is? No. Go ahead. You just want to twerk your ass up. No, 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 no. Like... Oh, wait. Happy you really, babies when you... Uh -uh, you can't do it in that... Look, is it is it a squirt? Is that why? Oh, bro, you this how nasty it is, y'all. She this happy baby, and oh. you basically stretch your. Oh yeah, this is. I ain't gonna lie. I only look at bitches when they, uh, I'm dog eating your crow, pussy, crow, crowing cow. What what are the everybody? And like that's the point. It's like what the fuck? This shit is so whorish and sexual that like, I just want to know if I'm in a yoga class of fifteen bitches, you telling me nine ain't thinking the same I'm thinking? I ain't gonna hold you. They have to look good. I don't know. You could be like, ugly and I still think about it. Oh, my God. All right. Uh, Listen, ugly people uh, have hot sex. I like gangbang porn. I wouldn't know. You never watch I wouldn't know. You only I, watch hot people in porn? No. I'm, oh, I'm not going to lie. Literally, I, and I've said it too much times on here now. I literally be like, oh, you so fine. Oh, you so fine. Oh, you so fine. Uh, I literally come up with how good they look, bitch. And if they ugly, I'll be like, this doesn't work for me. Okay. Bitch, I'm gonna start sending you video. I'm gonna start sending you videos so you can see these niggas be fine. Yep. The way these motherfuckers keep getting me to subscribe to their OnlyFans, just I'm so gonna look like, at the body. No, the only thing I can't do is a bad wig. No, no, no. Well, I that only, girl in I, South Africa, I, I watch, shouldn't have paid her. That I only wig watch was men, and they have to look so good that I can imagine them being my partner. Hard wig, hard life. Because I'd I be like, "Ooh, baby, take that. Ooh, baby, give that. Ooh, baby," I, and I'd be acting like. The man is my man, and I'm uh. watching him in action with another man. This is where my mind goes. I am, I am directing. Y'all, make sure you get your tickets. May 5th, we are at the Earth Theater in London. Listen, all the black people that live over there, just take that Euro star and come and see us. We're going to be there May 5th. We are having a whole new show, one that you didn't see. This is a part of the Climax Tour. Come through and see A. Make sure you head on over to whorehive.com and get your tickets now. Let's get into our hors d'oeuvre. Now, for this, it's kind of blending vanilla shit with a hors d'oeuvre. I want your advice for this. This Give is me. a sex tip for this advice. So, uh, 
after admitting that she reported her husband to the police because because of his creepy sexual kink, a woman has asked for clarification on whether or not she was in the wrong. What's the kink? I'm about to get to it. Because you know I like a butter knife. So a woman has been urged to pack up her things and leave her spouse after she shared that his sexual kink made her feel uncomfortable and she had reported him to the police. ABDL. Do I know the kink? You know the kink. It's and, not baby diaper? And based on um, where we kind of draw the lines with our fantasies, this is why I wanted to ask this question, especially based a couple of weeks ago on yours. So. Oh, my God. Hold on. Let me get to it. She says, I told him it makes me very uncomfortable, but I went along with it for a short period of time because he said it's the only thing that can get him off now. But I just couldn't continue with it anymore as it was making me fear for my life. Yeah. His kink is essentially... Waterboard. ...to have me to pretend to be dead and lifeless. The woman revealed that this sexual preference was a recent change oh. and it has caused her to question her husband's mental state. Okay. He's also been getting a lot more angry and aggressive with me later. lately, she adds. One, wanting to get help for him, the woman decided to report him to the police so they could speak to him and he could get some professional help. However, things backfired with the husband, of course, threatening her before she went to the authorities. Oh, if she ends up dead, well, this is going to be sick. Well, I don't know, but for this specific one, we've talked about the R-word kinks. We've talked about kidnapping kinks. I've also played this with my ex in terms of the R word. Um, for the sex tip this week, I wanted to ask you, and both of us can do this together. A, what would be a sex tip to communicate to your partner that you can't help but judge them for their kink? And also, though you want to please your partner, if you're uninterested in their kink, what should you do? So I think that we've opened up the dialogue to have people want to try a whole bunch of new things and clearly as you're with somebody maybe their kinks and fetishes change over time how would you communicate a partner comes coming to you with a kink that actually makes you uncomfortable especially because she did say right. she played into the kink a few times so i think that the scary thing about this because with mine with the butter knife situation i told him i want this okay i was like oh i want you to scare I, I told him i wanted to feel scared i want to like you know it was a feeling that you wanted yeah okay um with this specifically, I'm trying to think, what would I say? Because I would definitely offer a suggestion. Like, for example, someone told me they wanted me to play dead in a kink. I'd be like, that makes me feel really unsafe. But I would do a pillow princess thing. Okay. But pillow. Pillow. Um, it's weird because I remember role playing where I specifically wanted to be so intoxicated that I consented prior and told him I'm going to act like I can't consent. Mm -hmm. And so though I was so intoxicated, I wasn't lifeless, but I absolutely was like acting so inebriated that, you know, and that I like to be woken up with dick. Like I like that, to be well, fake. Well, sleep. that too. And again, if he's saying that this is his kink, you would say that you would just flat out say this makes me uncomfortable and I can't do this for you? If, if, uh, for the one that she's talking about to play dead, I don't like that. Okay. Cause, so let's not, what about something else that makes you uncomfortable? Like scat, maybe? Okay. And then I would probably offer pee. So you would just offer something to kind of compromise. It. So, like, I do think there's a compromise in everything. For example, like, my fantasy would be two guys, right? But I ain't gonna. You're done it, bitch. I I know I ain't gonna get it, in, baby. But I've definitely had the dirty talk of it. Oh yeah, I've had the fingers in my mouth. Like you wish another dick was in your mouth. Like I've had I've that. that. Yeah. With and so I think that there's things of like compromise with everything, and I never want my own desires. Excuse me. Let me say that my boundaries to be violated. Like I'm Agreed. in my year of no, bro. Right. I love saying no. It's my favorite thing. I think I say it a lot for work. Me too. I say it a lot for... But you see, you be getting a lot of no's from me. Do you want to grab a drink? No. no. You know? Like... You want to record this? No. I say no to you too. Yeah, and, we be saying no to each other. And I think like it's a lot of power. A whole bunch of no's over here. Yeah, no, but, no, 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 bitch. No is such a... It's something we are scared to say. And I'm so glad that we are both comfortable. I thought you were trying to give me a high five. No. Yes. <laughs> um, for me, I'll be honest with you. Um, I think this is the thing. 
when it comes to kinks, fetishes, or how you and your partner have chemistry in the bedroom, it's really important for you to also come to the realization that this may not be your person. I think that calling the cops is a lot. And unless you know that nigga be going to the cemetery to smoke some blunts and maybe that nigga... She said that he's been violent with her. No, no, no. No, I get that. But that's that's outside of the bedroom. That's outside of the bedroom. I'm talking about... I think that this is all included, Mandy. If a man has been violent with you and then when you ask, fuck, he wants you to play dead, bitch, that go to guilt, ho. Okay. I'm scared. I, I, if I don't want to be to play dead and he wasn't cussing me out and hitting me, maybe I'd be like, eh, it's like that scary. Oh, you telling me you get violent with me and then we fucking, you want me to be dead? he's been angry and aggressive that doesn't say that he's been beating her ass. So to me, though, that's where I'm taking that out of the bedroom. It's not, it doesn't say that he's been doing that in the bedroom. So to me, that's where we're separating our desires and the behaviors in the bedroom. Uh, clearly a relationship, you shouldn't be with a man who you feel unsafe with, period. We talked about the same Yeah, yeah, one. yeah. But to me, this is literally leaning into the kink because our minds go crazy. There's bondage. Bitch, you just had a butter knife to your throat. Crazy. Ew. I ain't here for it. Like, I've had conversations with men who were like, you can't I say really- ew, that's kink shaming. It ain't for me. Y'all could do it. And if a man came to me... Don't ew my yum. Okay, yuck. It's yuck my yum, but... You ewed, though. That's what I'm saying. You didn't say yuck. Well, because I don't like blood. I don't want you to act like you about to stab me. I talked about my... Okay, uh, well, it wasn't period sex, bitch, because I'm going to tell you right now, we're going to have our salt burn moment, baby. Well, I'll say that there was someone that I was once interested in having sex with, and as soon as he let me know that his kink was knife play and blood... You have, go find you a partner for that. I literally was not interested because A, that's my boundary. I can't fulfill you. But I'm also not going to have sex knowing that I'm not going to fulfill you. And also, like, to be fair, if the knife play was him actually wanting to see blood and it wasn't like this fantasy play. Would that have been different for you? Yeah. Okay. Because to to me, we're we're in this, uh, I'm blindfolded, it's this pretend land. Seeing the blood, the slicing, I, I don't, I can't do that. Okay, so basically... Your suggestion, though, overall would be if you don't feel safe with this person, if you can't please this person, leave this person. No, I think that... If, okay, that's not your... That was my advice. So I said, yours, leave them? If this nigga got a kink that make me uncomfortable so much so that I'm judging you and thinking to call the police because I think you need professional help, I'm gonna leave you. Why can't we just not do that part of sex, though? Oh. If I, you have a, a, a kink... I look, I'm like, bitch, you, you like to peg. So if you can't peg a nigga, he's supposed to leave you? Well, no. To be very clear then, he was open, knowing that that was my kink, and he was not interested yeah, in Yeah, but it. if it was a hard no, no you no. would have left him? He wouldn't no, 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 but his compromise was to allow me to do it to someone else. So if, if you don't have the right. wherewithal to let your partner go enjoy this kink with someone else, that's a whole different. I assume this to be a monogamous relationship. Pegging was a hard no for my ex, but he was open to allowing me to do it with someone else. So it's not like I was kept from my from my kink or my pleasure at all. There wasn't a boundary put on what I wanted to enjoy. With this, it sounds like, bitch, I gave you a little bit. Now and it's okay for there to be boundaries. Maybe you just of didn't have anything as crazy. Right. So. And I agree. There's, there's um, reasons to have boundaries. Can I take over your hors d'oeuvre? With my foot job. That shit was really fun. Look at you wanting to bleed into my outline. No, you should have followed your own outline. I want to get into the horrible decision. All right, we don't have to talk about my foot job. Good. All right, we'll save it for another episode. Uh, (laughs) We're going to get into the horrible decision. uh, Because maybe. Yeah, the niggas that want to pay for feet, they are in here. Pit. Here you go, bro. They're you like, just, ooh, I want to know how you did it. You having a man and lifting your legs this many times, baby. You trying to show puss to the YouTube. I did see something recently that was like, if you got a nigga, how many th- thirst traps can you do? And I was like, wait, that was, who said that? I think it was conversation with Zoe and he like sent me something and he'll send me some of the clips. But I saw it like, are thirst traps allowed if you're taken? And I was First like, off, if you find everything a thirst, Hello, bitch. Bitch, I'm so be a say, Get the fuck I out of here. Gonna be like, I can't control niggas being hungry. I can literally bitch. be at the beach, babe. They're going to be starving for me. I could literally have my face be, it'd be a selfie, and my lips look like it could wrap around their dick. I can't help that they want it. These lips be looking voluptuous. Um, <laughs> wait, Andu. 
Um, You're a petty bitch that lives for drama. Uh uh-uh, uh, don't do that. See, the thing is, you ain't have to do that. Uh uh-uh, uh, see, the thing is, you better calm the fuck down. Bitch. You see what I mean? You see why I can't take her serious, bruh? Hey, look, everybody laughing. Why y'all laughing? I don't like seeing all this teeth in the background, bitch. Uh, producers. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it's just funny. Honestly, shut the fuck up. Bro, right. I'm going to tell you, it's only funny because I feel like I'm not uh, keeping up enough. So whenever someone else tells me about it, I'm like, bitch, what the fuck is this? What did that do? You what You're making me want to call me and be like, hey, how's first, the weather? Just so she can tell me something. First off, I don't even be doing that. Bitch, I love other people's drama. That's the crazy thing. But I don't be, I when I tell you I don't have drama, that's why I watch that. Bitch, how you don't have drama? I don't have drama. I don't know what y'all talking about. I ain't got no drama. This is why I like reality TV. I be like, ooh, they lives are so much more drama food than mine. I ain't got no drama. What is this noise you're making? <laughs> I think that drama is subjective. And I ain't got it, bitch. You literally just said everything drama. that's going on on the internet. I ain't, got drama. I ain't got drama. That was a couple weeks ago. If we <laughs> Anyway. The Lulu land. We're not going to do this. I ain't got no drama. Because you know what's crazy? I don't think about nobody. So what no drama? No more pain. You kind of look like her too with his little outfit. Don't do this. You could be on stage. No first more off, drama. So, so now I look like Mary. Don't do this. You look like the boots and it's first Missy. Off, Sorry. First off, these boots ain't high enough to be Mary. That's true. Bitch, they got to go above my knee. But you can figure it out. All right. Speaking of, you might be able to fit your little foot job thing. No, I'm not. Right? You ruined it. No, you might be able to. No, 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 no. Nah. Okay, that's fine. Um, so, for the horrible decision this week, um, I want to lean into being touch starved, which I've been talking about a lot. Mm. Um, I talked about it on Patreon like a month ago. Oh, shit. Sorry, not the burp. It was like when that bitch threw up on a banana, which you haven't sent me. I don't appreciate that. Calm down. Now. Calm down. We're going to get it. We're going to get it. Uh, so being touch starved is also something I'm dealing with, not only in therapy, but this podcast and where the fuck I am in my fucking life. And... Oh, my God, it's giving. I changed because if y'all go back to the fucking beginning of this podcast, I talk about fucking niggas and not kissing them, fucking niggas and not cuddling, doing all of those things. And since my relationship, um, that's been something I now realize I am completely yearning. It ain't even dick, even though I got the one nigga, which hopefully I get my, my round three. But. I don't crave at all sex as much as I realize I'm crying to my therapist saying that I want to cuddle, that I want to hug, that I want someone to massage me, not one that I pay for, but one that's a little bit more intimate. Um, I think we talked about on our Patreon that I found in- intimacy in watching a TV show with somebody and how much I miss that. And so I don't... I could say it's getting older, but the things that I crave now from a man is so different than just the sexual desire to be with one. It's feeling respected. It's feeling cared for. It's feeling loved. It's feeling protected. It's feeling safe. All those things. And I realized that a lot of those things come with intimacy Mm. and everything that has nothing to do with actual dick and pussy. No vagina, no nothing. That's why I said maybe you get to talk about your foot job because maybe that's intimate. Maybe that don't count as sex. But job sound like a job, not really sex. Well, to be, um, actually, this is something interesting. The foot job, which I won't go into detail with <laughs> because I stopped her, um, <laughs> was how sex was about to start. And then we were both like, maybe we shouldn't come. Maybe we should hold it for our vacation. Like, we're going to be on vacation for a week. We're going to be 10 days. It's long. That's a long ass. The longest we've been together was a week, and he literally was like, bitch, you don't annoy me. This is crazy. He don't call me a bitch, but that's really how he days? gets it. But yeah, we have to go between LA to Hawaii, back to LA, leaving from New York. It's a lot. So we talked about holding it. He was like, yo, people go there for their honeymoon. Like, let's fucking hold this cum. Girl was crazy. Literally, like, my foot, I thought his dick was going to break. That's how hard he was. But say all that to say, I realized how intense the intimacy gets when you aren't having sex. Um, we went to DC a few weeks ago. I met some of the horror hype. They were great. Shout out to Marjorie. I hope that's her name at the Lyle. Um, long story short, we had a 45 hour make 45 minute makeout session. And he told me he thought it was the best sex we ever had. I was like, really? 
He's like, yo, it was such a build up for me, touching you, looking at you, kissing you, talking to you, listening to the music in the back. Like it was so much of a build. And I think that type of shit, when you don't have sex, it's like it almost makes the sex not that big a deal. Right. You definitely need a cuddle buddy, girl. It's so crazy because the word need is something I'm battling with now because of all the trauma associated. With we can it. need touch. And I realize though, I I do. I need it. Why don't you just do it with a woman? Well, so can I tell you? Oh my God, I hate that you brought that up because I was just in my fucking therapy There's session today. Safety, girl. When I tell you, I absolutely love and adore my friends. They've been now joining me on tour. They've been like, bitch, what city we going to next? Because I get to fly people in and out and shit is comp. And I feel like I'm on tour with my friends and I love it. I'm in a space where I realize love my homegirls to death. Love intimately or not intimately. Love fucking women. I have zero desire to date women. Not dating, Mandy. No. Even being intimate. Like, oh, I don't want that with a woman. I enjoy eating some pussy, rubbing on a titty, kissing you with a man in the but room. But she talks about cuddling friends before. Yeah, but that's... And I still want a man right now. I want that from a man. So I was going to make a comment about the touch starve. Yes. That I think you may need to try out to just surprise yourself. The dude I was dating two years ago, Dreamville dude, he said to me during the pandemic, he was so stuck to his computer. The company we worked for is one we were all participating in during the pandemic. I feel like... It, anyway. You don't have to give any more details. No, 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 no. I was going to say, I feel like uh, there wasn't a person that didn't almost crash this company, right? Because of how much. And he said, I didn't get to leave my computer. And I went to get a stretch. And he was like, I didn't even realize the person that touched me, like how much my body felt full, like I needed to be touched. I think there, it's easier said than done because you're associating all of that with a person that you love in a romantic way. Some touch can happen, bro. And I think you should explore it. And I think you with, should just with, with try what? to just try to survive yourself with sensual massages, with maybe some cuddling with people that you know you won't fuck. Just that touch point. Like it's like when you've hugged someone that really needs a hug. Like you don't realize you need a hug until you get one. So that's the thing. I don't want to pay for a massage. I know, oh, and it's open now. So he back on the schedule. I might have to go see him. But he on there? Oh, bitch. Flat iron, baby, it's open. Um, uh, uh-uh. uh, don't be looking. Don't my be birthday's get, on Sunday. Don't be going to get a massage. Oh, Benny should feel his massages. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bitch, when he put my leg up, baby. But even that, I I realize that I want someone to spend the night, sleep over. Like I want the I get that. intimacy of those things without, of course, without sex. But I don't want to have to pay for it. You know I ain't paying for dick. I don't want to pay for intimacy either, goddamn it. Uh-huh. I just want somebody to actually like to be around me, to cuddle, to lay up with, to fucking enjoy, and that's it. So um, being touch starved is where I'm just like, damn, I actually do need a person. Uh, before we get to home mail, because I wanted to, I wanted to share with you guys the potential effects of a woman who is touch starved. And Murder. these things. I mean, it could be. You could become a murderer. Um, But I wanted to go through these things because where we may feel like we don't need a partner, we don't need nobody, especially in this modern woman era of super independency and codependency being such a bad word associated with relationships. I realized how much I need intimacy from someone that I'm not only attracted to, but someone that I feel safe with. So it's not a stranger. It's somebody that I genuinely like to be around, which is hard because you niggas be niggas. Um, Anyways, things in which can be affected if you are not getting intimacy. The first one is low self-esteem, loneliness, a lack of emotional connection. This one might be why the fuck I was celibate. Decreased libido. Um, Increased stress which that's not surprising. Uh, My word that I'm also working through in therapy right now, resentment, Mm. a communication gap, of course, infidelity, a negative body image. And for those of you in a relationship or in a marriage, this is actually where I know we talk about fucking money, 
a lack of physical intimacy is one of the leading causes of divorce. And of course, it's because it leads to not only resentment, but sometimes infidelity, sometimes... Because feel- that's a real connection, it, right? And it's needed. As human beings, fucking hate Jesus, Muhammad, Allah. I don't know all the little... You fucking hate it? I don't Damn, know why. Maybe. No, I'm mad that it got wired that way because now I'm dependent on another human being for this. Like, where the aliens at? Bring them down, bitch. I'm waiting. But we have been wired this way by our creator to actually need someone else. And in my super independence as a woman, and a part of me that actually felt strong and saying, I don't need no man. I'm like, fuck, I really fucking need this person to make me feel this way. And it has so many connections to so many other things. I'm going to say this because I think you and a lot of people need to hear it. Saying you need connection is okay and very healthy. That's why we, you know, replace friendships sometimes with partners. Like maybe you're watching a show or a movie with a friend because you're single right now or you're taking trips with a friend because you're single right now. Like just because you need, like it's just, we have to live our lives. And do. And and I think that is the thing that we're not doing. At least I could speak for myself because I was becoming so angry with my ex for the reason that I was single that I couldn't just enjoy anymore. And like the openness I had for people was so closed because I was so mad. That is the final phase of grieving in a breakup, I think. Okay. It's like my self-worth, I'm not really speaking about you, but me, my self-worth was becoming so attached to him and me thinking, you talked about a friend that said they couldn't be around you because they were, you know, uh, partnered or whatever. And like, for me, I had felt that I wasn't feeling worthy because this person was gone, which is crazy because when we see single women, we kind of pity them. Not we, society pities them. She could have left a terrible person. Right. Absolutely. You know, there's so much power in that. Indeed. How many unhappy people are we seeing in relationships? I was unhappy at the end, not for the full part of my relationship or even even more than half of my relationship was great. But I think that like the weight of the word need makes people feel like they're giving up their own power. But it's okay. Like living your life until it happens is the number one priority. I literally wrote in this book um, yesterday or journal, excuse me. Yesterday I was reading some of the things with the person that I'm dating how happy and how I couldn't believe what was happening to me was like, I really had just focused so much on my own personal joy day to day instead of being angry. Literally. I mean, maybe the first eight things I wrote about, I want someone alternative. I talked about wanting someone that looked like Lenny Kravitz, bro, wrote it down. It was crazy. And then the, one of the final things I wrote was a man that makes me feel so sure of my place in their life. And on the next page, I wrote about the things that I wanted for myself and that what is tired of myself doing. And the thing that I wrote was, I'm so tired of feeling like it's my fault. Like I get chosen over. I get so tired of feeling like I made a choice in my life that's keeping me from a partner. And I used to think, not horrible. This podcast, I was about to say. No. Not horrible, but just like my freedom. My personality supersedes horrible, right? I've always been this girl. Yep. Before I had a podcast, I might talk about sex in it with everybody, right? That used to scare me. And like, ooh, is that why people don't want to end up dating me? Bro, we are exactly where we're supposed to be. And the people we meet celebrate that and they'll match that and make that feel, that energy feel increased and like purposeful. So like, it's really about knowing that you're in the right place. Bro, timing is everything. Like, it's so everything. You're going to meet a nigga because it's just happening to me right now. This is count number like 16. What? For the N-word. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we both sent each other a concert that we wanted to go to. It's at Elsewhere. Like, same time. He was like, yo, you really like mine. And I was like, bruh, I can't believe I met you right now. What if I met you two years ago and you're with your ex and I couldn't have you? And I realized, like, oh, we're meeting people the same. Old Bay meeting the person he's with. What if he met that bitch a month before, right? Or he couldn't have been with her. He wasn't ready to be with her. He went through therapy. Like, we are so much in timing. Like the people we're supposed to be with, they're going through their phase. You're going through therapy. Bro, a nigga that you end up meeting, 17, count 17, he may like. Now, what did he I mean, may count 17? You just said, I said 16 times. Oh, okay. 
Okay, nigga. Again. He might really dislike a quality that you are working through. And if you met him today, you would he would not be able to be with you. I mean, you know that I told you that's why I'm revisiting. Uh oh, Q. oh, from okay. Q. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying, right? Like the person that you're looking for, there may be something they need to get over. There may be maturity levels they need to reach. Like, I really have a strong belief that like there's a divinity in timing. And I just believe that can, not can even I ask, for love, but my life. Can I ask you then maybe? You're a lot more emotional than me, so I feel like you meet a guy. Bitch, please. You, hold on, hold on. You hold cry on, way on. more than me. No, no, no. When I, I say emotional in regards to your uh, ability to hop in and out relationships with people that you feel safe and comfortable and move forward with. And I ask you this because in terms of intimacy, in how do you find or request this? So this is my issue right now. So I got the little nigga that you know. Y'all saw each other at that event at one time. You know, the one I told you. So I have, bitch, the one I just sucked his dick and didn't get, oh, okay, him, okay. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. So even with him, right, we know that we have this, it's not a relation, we have casual sex and we enjoy each other, we talk damn near every day, but it doesn't go beyond us talking about how we can't wait to fuck each other the next time we see each other. So... Because it's so casual, before we wrap out of here, this is my home mail, and I would like your advice on it. I am having casual sex with somebody while also craving intimacy. This person I do not want to be with, but this person I truly enjoy being with when we're together. However, him. Yes. However, in the times that we're together, and we've talked about it, I'll have my own room sometimes, all the time. Um, and we kind of enjoy what we've already created. However, I need fucking intimacy. How do I communicate to someone who I've already created a casual sex relationship with that I might want us to stay in the same room and cuddle, that I might want to wake up next to him, that I might want kisses on my forehead, and that I don't really want much else, but in the time that we're together, because it's it literally, we're never together. Like, we'll, we'll be together for like two days straight. How do I request intimacy from a casual sex That is such a whole male question I'm sure a lot of people I know, have. I know. And, so and by the, the way, reason, we have men in the room. So intimacy with a casual sex partner, if any of y'all have any advice, please come to the mic. Wow. So this is an interesting thing because this was a topic that came up in my relationship because when I'm away and I'm in LA and, you know, something may happen with him and someone else, that was actually one of my hard no's. Oh. No sleepovers, no this, no that. And he was like, yo, like, I know what you're saying. He's like, not that he didn't agree. He's like, I don't really date, like, women that are, like, bottom tier bitches. Like, these girls definitely are used to men being able to give them a little bit more. I can't run through one of these See, I can get more like a gift. But I think he meant more like, I can't just run through a bitch that's dope. Like, Bitch. When you're a girl of, I hate to be like Kevin Samuels, you, but like a certain stature or status or whatever, like you can't run through a bitch and dump, and dump her. Like, right? Okay. Like he's like, yo, I, I might have to do a little song and dance here with this bitch. And he's like understanding certain things. I'm like, well, I don't really care. This is my thing, right? Y'all, she just called me a bottom tier bitch, which is crazy, but I'm gonna let her keep talking. No, you <laughs> new niggas don't just run through you, Mandy. The nigga flew you no, first class. But, th- but that's what I'm saying. I can get the first class. First off, with no question. I get the first class. I get the room at the Ritz. I get... Nigga, I I'm, my I'm talking about a the, girl that'll be so desperate the, for dick. They just let you do anything. But that's the thing. And maybe it's a and love treat language, you any type of way. Maybe it's a love language thing. I'm telling you the first class, the, the gifts, the treatment, the games, like all of that means nothing because, bitch, I want you to rub my forehead. Right. And I, <laughs> I, I understand because that's a real thing. Right. Even for me, like when dating other people, like I'm sure that nigga don't like when they take me to do, you know what I mean? But anyway, I would say you need to, I don't know, I'll tell you what I think you should do in this situation, but I'll tell you what you need to do moving forward. Okay. Stop being the cool girl. Okay. You are... I don't want to be much more with him, though. Hold on. You're being the cool girl to where guys feel so comfortable that they don't feel like you have an issue with this because you're cool. Okay. And Valid. And that friendship that you build and that cool girl connection, kind of... He don't think he's mistreating you at all. Right? No, he don't. Of course he doesn't. Because you're the cool girl. 
I'm not really scared to be vulnerable. Your vulnerability yep. has been an issue for you Absolutely. because it's your safeguard for your heart. Right. I don't give a fuck. You're and so look like a crying whiny bitch. I don't think it's crying or whiny because <laughs> you you're not about to be crying whiny when you when you say what I think you should say. Okay, what should I say? We've been fucking for a minute. And while yeah. I enjoy where we're at, I'm at the point where I need a fake boyfriend when we're around each other. Need you to be my little fake man. I'm hungry. I need to watch a show. I need a little kiss or two. I don't really think my pussy can get as wet if I don't got a fake boyfriend. Not a fake boyfriend. And you let him know exactly what you need. The fake boyfriend is, one, a cool girl joke. It's not being like, I need intimacy and I need my <laughs> my hair stroked. And blah. You don't have to go there. You can make it very light to where he'll understand. Can I ask you, Wolf? That was Thank good. You. you wouldn't be thrown off or felt like a girl was lying like she wanted more but she's gonna joke about the fake boyfriend Neat. that's definitely gonna pop in my mind but if i can believe that you can really stick with it and it's not gonna bleed over and be complicated later, oh yeah and i think he, I'm, I'm he trusts that. me in my ability yeah, and also wait 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 saying remember hold on before you talk edit <laughs> i said i understand where we're at and that we aren't pursuing more, more. that's how you started that's how i started okay edit i feel like that's such a trap it's a trap because you feel like as as women and maybe most men, once you include the intimacy that a woman does start just. Yeah. It's like fantasizing. Like I know or romanticizing. OK. That's romanticizing. Kind of, that's kind of like at least on my side where I've grown as like a lover or I guess a partner. I try not to even make that a possible belief. That's my thing. I, I think me. that we need to be very clear, though, in that Mandy it's tired of the transaction. Yeah. So yeah. it's Ooh, either, girl, don't, it, don't use that word either. I'm in therapy right now. Oh. No, but that's the, that is a word you should be using. Like, it's a little too transactional for me right Girl, he's not even like paying me. Get, I want to see him. He wants to see me. Transactional doesn't mean money. Right. It's right. an exchange. But no. I'm not fully getting what I want. But here's, this is why I ask for, for the men listening. A woman comes to you and is like, I enjoy just fucking you, but I want the boyfriend, girlfriend treatment. Does, would that scare Either when you're together, away. when you're together, it's not even like you're asking him to check on you f on how your day was. Are you feeling good? You want me to send you soup? No. When not we're send you soup, bitch. You love together, doing that. I'm just saying, like, I don't think you're asking for a lot. You're not. Okay, so as men, me asking for us to maybe be in the same room, the cuddling, that's not asking for a lot? At no. least for me, it's not. Hold on. Whoop, look a little... Talking to the mic like you if, know how to pod. If you can be committed to it. If you can be honest about it. Because the real truth is people move their positions in relationships. They I move know. positions. Yeah. So if you can stay committed to it and really uh, make uh, deliver on that. And just be like, great. nigga, you only going to be my boyfriend for 36 hours. Because he wants it too, to be honest. Bro, he wants it too. That transactional shit for niggas is tough. And I even think a lot of men can compartmentalize. I can't, right? But and I used to pride myself as a woman of being able to compartmentalize. And you probably and now can. it's fucking driving me fucking. Crazy. I do think you need to say it on the phone. Okay, we, I mean we talk every day. Again. Really? Oh, every single day. Oh, but girl. like, hold on, we be talking because he be posting his little outfits on You'll Snapchat, be okay. and I be like, damn, you look good. But that'll be like our conversation. I think so you're fine. When I say I talk to him every day, I just be letting him know he look good. He'll let me know I look good. Or we talk about There's how, a touch point. Yeah, no. Nah, or we both get drunk and I'll wake up and I'm like, nigga, why did you hit me at 4 a.m.? We're not even in the same city. And he'd be like, I got lit last night. And I was thinking about what we... Like, so we... Like, we be doing a little I dumb shit like that. I do not think he's going to receive this badly. Okay. Like, you... That's a lot of talking. Oh, even yeah, if no, it's super talk. cash. Like, it's very cash. So, I think... Yeah, I think... Get on the phone. So, can I be honest? You've never talked on the phone? We don't talk on the phone until I'm like, landed, uh, see you soon. We only talk on, we don't talk on the phone. We text, but I'm not a phone person. I talk only until Girl. 11 a.m. I don't talk on the phone with nobody. Okay. All well, of my friends know I don't talk on the phone. You have this conversation on the phone. And okay. either it's a glass of wine, either late night, maybe call him and, you know, tease it a little bit so it doesn't feel super heavy. But I think fake boyfriend's a fun way to say it. And then even if you want to be honest and be like, yo, I just don't have that many partners right now, niggas. So... I can't just pull up on you to suck dick and leave. Like, make it. I would even make a joke. Like, I ain't getting paid. I like being around you. We like hanging. No, because then he might just offer me money. Look at you. I hate. 
Bad advice. I like what you said earlier. Fake she was doing fake good. Fake she was doing good. God damn. I was joking, but anyways, guys. I guess he might take that serious. Jesus. He, and he might and be like, well, what you need, bitch? And didn't just might pay me and now I don't get intimacy, bitch. No. Okay. This is dick I want for free. God damn it. He fine. Anyways, y'all. <laughs> Thank y'all for tuning in to another episode. If y'all want to support us more and get more episodes like this, where we're solo, shooting the shit, talking the shit, join us over on our Patreon. That is patreon.com backslash horrible decisions. I don't like that you just did that, bitch. <laughs> Anyways, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you also follow us on social media to see where you could see us live in a city near you. Hurry up, I gotta pee. All right. This has been yet another episode of Horrible Decisions. Bye. Bye. It's bonus bitches. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. We're on our in-person shit. We are in our in-person shit. You know, people say they kind of like... I want y'all to let us know in the comments. Would you prefer we do once in a blue some in-home Zooms? Some I mean, I've been... I, I Honestly, and you do this a lot... We are never going to please everybody. Some niggas is like so happy, like they feel like it's content that's back in the studio. And others are going to want home. When I tell you, I'll be reading them comments. And baby, I just know we're not going to please all of y'all for, I mean, for I nothing. I don't mind if people like, you know, I get that you get to have a peek in. Because we would never, we never get to do real episodes like at home or anything like that. That was COVID. So if you kind of feel like you got a peek or something a little different, I, I can get the allure to it. Like, I haven't really paid for bonus content in a minute, but when I did, I did enjoy feeling like I had something that you wouldn't give the regular public. So if if that doesn't work, then we'll just start doing nudes. Well, you will start doing nudes, bitch. You already got to feed. That's I did, I did also want to apologize uh, to some of the patrons. Bitch, don't know what happened to the town hall. So for the 154 people that were in there this month, Congratulations to y'all for you being able to tea. join us. You got some tea, a whole bunch of tea. Baby, when I tell you I was looking everywhere and I've been recording, like, first off, been using Zoom. We've been doing town halls now for years. Never lost, like, one just, it just didn't show up anywhere. I looked on my laptop, my desktop. I asked you to look. I even well, shout I mean, out to Barry. They may be able to recover. Barry did some, some research and was trying to, like, see where it could be. So he was helping me. And I was like, bro, I can't find this shit fucking anywhere. And so not, mind you, when we were done, it said it was loading. Not sure where the fuck it went. Maybe our Zoom updated in the middle. Nonetheless. Well, they um, can give us the money. Y'all will be getting... This bonus episode this week, um, where we don't have to rehash anything. Again, if y'all were on the town hall, y'all were on the town hall. If you weren't, you weren't. Um, I guess Easter just passed, so you want to... I mean, it's it's April Fool's today, and I took a pregnancy test, and it's negative. And that... I want to say last year on April Fool's, you did too. This is like becoming a reoccurring thing. No, no, no. There's no way. With Lambo. I was dating the... Um, that was two years ago. I thought that was on. I thought that was. Oh, that nigga's April in jail. Fools though. That nigga I, is in. I swear jail. that was the April Fools episode though. No, oh, the Plan B one. No, that was the New Year's episode. The pre a pregnancy test though. I, I swear you came in here and did that on an April Fools before. I swear can't remember, God. but swear to God. maybe I was joking. But no, I really took one this morning, bro. I'm when I tell you, I've been feeling so sluggish. I don't know what I got. I just feel like it better I better not be contagious talking about don't know what I got, bitch. I feel like I can't. I don't feel sick. I just feel like I can't do anything. Because I don't think we six feet away. But I think my body's run down from travel. Like, that's a real thing. Oh, yeah, no. It, I've been traveling every week. And if y'all are watching, <laughs> war J. Cole today because I will be at Dreamville. And bitch, I'm mad as fuck. And listen, I'm going to tell y'all about my little hypocrisy, right? Woke up this morning, was hoping it was an April Fool's joke. It's not. Chris Brown will no longer be at Dreamville, and they replace him with fucking Fifty Cent. And I just don't understand who got why replaced they are with Usher. Didn't it, Usher was a replacement for someone else last year, right? No, I think it was Usher and Drake. They were always the headliners. Maybe last I'm year. thinking about Coachella. He no, there there what there is always some sort of replacements going on. Let me tell you what they did. So they replaced Chris Brown with Fifty Cent. And they replaced Money Long with Huncho. Now, here's the thing. Huncho, that, that nigga, nigga fine as fuck. When I tell you, though, when I listen to him, my ears hurt. Like, I want to like him because he's so fine. Hopefully the sound is bad for like, his set. I would like to ride his face. I love watching him and his girl. and I, I like their content. Oh, they got he got a girl? And honestly, it's a wait, black wait, wait, girl. Wait, wait, wait. He got which, a girl? Yeah. 
I thought him and Gloss was just like fuck friends. Nah, or they were laying in the bed and she was like, you like me eat my ass? He's like, yeah. But Gloss was like, that's her nigga, but not her nigga. Okay, like, well, that's, some, like, that's her nigga. They be po- fucking. If you posting and you in the bed and you cuddled up, that's your nigga. But they be doing stuff. That is not your nigga. Just because you Posting? Be- Girl, no. Look at all the little thoughts that be up in bed with niggas posting that they in the bed with these niggas. And when they, they, they sleep. Niggas. If you post, okay, that's okay. your man. Only if he awake. My nigga asked me when he, like, he was like, um, what, what did he say to me? We had a conversation. Now he want to be introduced on the ground. No, he doesn't. Oh, okay. But, like, we had a conversation about it. And I was like, yo, I'm, like, a really consensual poster. Like, even my homegirls, if there's a picture I think they won't like, like, I'll ask. But I was like, you know, I do feel like it's time for you to get a leg in there. And he was laughing. He was like, yeah, like, every time maybe you post me, it's like a new tattoo. Like, you got one on this side, one on this side. And then I'm like... No, because there's going to be a bitch that's like, I know that Africa tattoo. Oh, absolutely. I know that calf. And then I'm going to be sitting there crying like, did you fuck her yesterday? Or no? Absolutely. No. no. So I feel like it's just a no for me. I, I really don't. And also, my homegirl got me so convinced. Bitch.